Greetings. I am the pastor of First United Methodist Church of Medford. My name is Ben DeVoid, and we are so glad you have decided to join us for this online worship service. Just a few announcements. Next Sunday's service will be a drive-through communion on mistletoe. Just drive down West Main after the church, take a left, and you'll get a, a word of inspiration and communion. The following Wednesday, uh, January 6th, we will resume our book study, Christ in Crisis. I'm so happy you've decided to join us for this service. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to us all. Hallelujah. Today we light the Christ candle. This is the Sunday of Christmas. Let us pray. Send, O God, in the darkness of this troubled world, the light of your Son. Let the star of your hope touch the minds of all people with the bright beams of mercy and truth. And so direct our steps that we may ever walk in the way revealed to us. As the shepherds of Bethlehem walked with joy, 
to the manger where he dwelled, who now and ever reigns in our hearts. Lord Christ, amen. Light the Christmas candle now, think of donkey, sheep, and cow. Birthday candles for our King, oh, let the Alleluia's ring. Candle, candle, burning bright, shining in the golden tonight. Candle, candle, burning bright, oh, fill our hearts with Christmas light. Fill our hearts with Christmas light. Oh, fill our hearts with Christmas light. Let us pray. We'll take a moment of silence to center ourselves. Lord Jesus, we come with Christmas cheer, even while the world struggles with a pandemic. We come with hope, even while many are hungry and without shelter. We come with peace, even while we see private and public battles day to day. We come with your presence, knowing that you long to restore us and will not forsake us. Lord Jesus, born of peasant parents in the backwater town of Bethlehem, this Christmas help us to remember who you remember, those on the fringes, the lonesome, and those who are not easy to love. Lord Jesus, born in a stable, south by Herod, taken as a refugee to Egypt, hear the cry of all who are refugees, Fill us with love and care for them, that we may show that love. Lord Jesus, who became the great physician, we pray for doctors and nurses who have worked a long year of COVID-19. We pray for their endurance, for their peace of mind, for their physical and mental well-being. Lord Jesus, for all frontline workers who are face to face with the public each day, for the mail carrier and the grocery store clerk. Lord Jesus, holy brother, born within a family, we give thanks to you for our homes. We give thanks for loved ones and our security. We remember all who have not been able to travel this holiday season. All who have not been able to see their children, grandchildren, or aging parents, we pray for their comfort and consolation. Lord, we remember all who suffer of body, mind, or spirit. Watch over them and those who care for them. We remember those near the end of their lives and offer thanks for all that they have given and we give thanks for the newborn child, full of possibilities and hope. Christ, our Savior, you are present with us. We put our trust in you. We believe that your justice and love will triumph. And we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
We are about to begin a new year, and we thank you for your generosity through this past year and your abiding presence in the year to come. I hope you've had a moment to check out our, our fun stewardship video and able to sing and snap along with your church family. And there are many ways to give. One way is to follow the link that's right here in this video that will take you to our website. Thanks be to God for the church and its work in this town. Amen. Our message this morning comes from John Tucker, one of your former pastors and our district superintendent. It's a great privilege to hear what he has to say in this Christmas season. He is preaching from Luke 2, 22 through 40. First, let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read, and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Hear these words. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what it is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, 
a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Peniel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. The favor of God was upon him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Merry Christmas. This time of year, I am reminded of when my son, Will, was in preschool. And the preschool every year had a Christmas program. And at the end of that Christmas program, they'd line the little kids up across the front and they would sing, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And as they sang it, they would always do this arm gesture. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And every time I hear that song, I cannot help but think of that arm gesture uh, from those kids. It was very cute. Now, I have to admit to you that uh, I'm pretty sloppy when it comes to separating Advent from Christmas. At my house, we'll put the Christmas decorations up on the day after Thanksgiving, and they stay up until at least the day after New Year's, and sometimes all the way through Epiphany. Now, they don't stay up through Epiphany because they're kind of supposed to. They stay up through Epiphany because I'm too lazy to take them down. But we love our Christmas decorations, and I realize that our decorations are up about 12% of the calendar year. So it's kind of a big deal. However, when it's time to take them down, and all the presents have been unwrapped and put away, and all the wrapping paper has been disposed of, all the lights have come down, everything is in their boxes, the boxes are where they're supposed to go in storage, and it's all done, I confess that I do have this attitude of, ah, thank goodness, Christmas is over. Now I can move on. And I have to say that reminds me a little bit of the feeling that I get from Simeon and the passage from today. Remember that Simeon was told that he wouldn't die until he had seen the Messiah. And in our passage, he sees the Messiah, and you can hear the relief in his voice. It's almost as though he's saying, I've seen it. Thank you, Lord. You can dismiss me in peace. And so I can't, I can't, help, but wondering, I can't help but wonder about seeing the Messiah or seeing Christmas. And I have to ask myself, have I seen it? Did I see it this year? Will I see it in the coming year? But I get where Simeon may be coming from, that sense of relief when it's all done and in the past. And had Simeon stopped there, it would have been fine. But he said a few more words, and that makes it a little tougher. And the rest of the sermon will be kind of wrestling with the rest of Simeon's words. I notice in our passage that we have several thematic pairings and they show up, and I want to call our attention to them today. The first pairing that I want to call to your attention is the pairing of law and spirit. We are told that Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple for circumcision and for the official naming, and that they did that according to the law. It was the law that brought them to the temple that day. And we're told that Simeon, 
was moved by the Spirit to come to the temple that day. And so there we have law and Spirit, two things we normally kind of think of as being in opposition, working together, creating the possibility of this scene, creating this encounter where Simeon recognizes the Messiah. The second pairing is the one of Simeon and Anna. These are kind of like uh, the godparents here welcoming Jesus. Uh, Simeon, a devout man, we are told. Anna, a widow who is called a prophet in Luke. So they are an important pairing and part of this story. The next pairing is kind of the obvious one. It's a pair of turtle doves. And every time I think about two turtle doves, I think about that Christmas song that goes on entirely too long. And when it's finally over, I feel kind of the way I did earlier, which is, thank goodness that's done. But the turtle doves tell us some things that are important. First of all, they tell us that this is a part of Mary's purification ritual, which should remind us that we're talking about a patriarchal culture that does not view women as equal or equally clean and requires these extra steps so that they can be part of community. And we should remember that. The second thing, though, is that the turtle doves are the poor person's alternative to lamb. The lamb that would be presented for the offering would be the normal thing. The poor person's alternative would be the pigeons or the two turtle doves. And so when Simeon recognizes the Messiah, all of that is in the background as well. But then Simeon continues to speak, as I mentioned earlier, and as he continues to speak, he says, this child will be the rising and falling of many. The rising and the falling, that's a pairing I want to pay attention to. And I don't think we should take this as a sense of timeline, that some people rise and then later they fall. I think it's a simultaneous response to the gospel. Because in the gospel, those who are accustomed to being on top are going to find themselves falling. And those who are accustomed to being on the bottom will find themselves rising. Which is very consistent with the gospel of Luke. Where the gospel comes from the poor, the outcast, the oppressed. Which brings me to my final pairing, which is hope and dread. Hope and dread are similar words. They're almost the same word. Hope expresses positively what dread expresses negatively. And both are responses to the gospel. If you're down on the low end, then the gospel brings hope, the hope in the rising. But if you're up on the powerful end, the gospel may bring a sense of dread. The dread of falling. And we can experience that hope and the dread as we look around our culture today. And every time we have discussions about justice and race and poverty, it's this tension between the rising and the falling, the hope and the dread. I read once in a book about the history of wassailing. An old Christmas tradition came from England, was practiced in this country in the 1800s. It kind of captured a spirit of misrule that used to dominate the Christmas season, but we have since kind of sanitized it and cleaned it up. But in the wassailing tradition, poor folk would show up at rich people's homes and they would sing songs, and the songs were kind of playful, also kind of threatening, kind of give us some food and drink, or we might do something that's uh, mildly damaging to your property. And it is from that tradition, actually, that we get our Halloween practice of trick or treat. That's the wassailing in its earliest form. It's kind of trick or treat. And you can hear that in the songs. You can actually hear it in We Wish You a Merry Christmas. The next verses, oh, bring us some figgy pudding, oh, bring us some figgy pudding. And bring it out here. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. That's from the wassailing tradition. The second thing about the wassailing tradition that I think of is that we have so thoroughly domesticated it. Because in those days it was about 
poor people expecting gifts from the wealthy. But over the 1900s, we sanitized that and changed it so now instead of it being political about poverty and wealth, now it is domestic and it's children who expect presents from parents. So we have thoroughly sanitized that tradition. So it brings me back to Simeon, who saw the Messiah before he died. And I have to wonder if I've seen the Messiah, or will I? And where do you look? I mean, our culture tells us that we are supposed to look for the Messiah at Christmas time in the sentimental, in hearth and home, in the eyes of a child reflecting the lights of a Christmas tree. And those things are powerful, and we should be grateful, but that's a really sanitized Christmas. The Gospel is originally about the powerless and the poor. I mean, that's where you see the Messiah. The Messiah doesn't come to us in the Christmas card, the gentle baby. The Messiah comes to us from streets. The Messiah is seen in the food pantry lives. The Messiah is seen in the warming shelters. The Messiah comes from the streets. And we have seen the Messiah this past year calling from the streets. And the gospel doesn't always come with nice, polite tones. It can be demanding, which is what we should expect from those who have been on the falling side of history. And so when the gospel speaks now, it comes from Black Lives Matter. It comes in the form of Me Too. It comes from our LGBTQ plus siblings. And it can be demanding because it should be. Bring us justice and equity. Bring us justice and equity. Bring us justice and equity. And bring it out here. We won't go till we get some. We won't go till we get some. We won't go till we get some. And we hear the politics in that story because the Christmas story is political. We need to own up to that. Those of us who have kind of been on the high end, we need to learn how to replace dread with hope ourselves. Hope for a world where justice and equity can reign, where the Messiah can be fully present throughout our world. So I ask you, just like I ask myself, have you seen the Messiah? Where do you look for the Messiah? And where will you look between this Christmas and next? Amen. Lord, we thank you for your church founded upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray. But go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depends on us and not upon you. Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together. Pray together. Sing together. And live together until that day when all God's children, black 
white, red, brown, and yellow. We will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and of our God. We pray. Thank you for joining us in this Christmas season. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>